Today, we're going to be discussing how you can enable fast data-driven improvements with process optimization. Before I begin, I, I have to throw this slide up here. This is the slide that says anything I say and do here today cannot be held against me in the court of law. It is also the slide that says as part of this conversation, if you make any forward-looking statements, you should make no purchasing decisions based on them because they're always subject to change. I'm sure you've read the fine print and we're now ready to go. Quick agenda of what we'll be talking about for the next 20 minutes or so. We'll start out with a quick why and what of process optimization. Then we'll dive into how the ServiceNow platform gives you everything you need to create a closed loop process for continually optimizing your workflows. Then we'll wrap up giving you all the information you need to get started mining your data and optimizing your processes immediately. I always like to start sessions like this with a quote. I thought this one from the great American author, Maya Angelou, worked well. Do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. I like this quote because it sums up the solution we're going to be talking about today. Process optimization, which is the brand name we give our in-platform process mining capabilities, that helps you automate the process of X-raying our workflows and showing us where and how we can do better for anyone and everyone involved with them. Now, with everything we do, there is design and desired path in our minds for how it should work and how things should play out. Whether that be planning an event like a wedding or maybe you're setting up a new business process or even a park. And when you design things, you design for efficiency as well as completeness to provide the best experience possible for everyone. For example, if we look at someone designing a park, they design it with paths for people to walk, bike, and rollerblade on, ponds to take a little rowboat out on, benches to sit on and read a book or share a story with a friend, some lush grassy, grassy areas with baseball fields or areas for people to throw down a blanket and have a picnic or perhaps play a game of Scrabble on a Saturday afternoon like my wife and I used to do. We design to provide the optimal experience for as many people as possible. Unfortunately, what we designed isn't always what ends up happening in reality. And while this new path on the screen here and, and this new reality may be more efficient for those trying to get from point A to point B, it certainly doesn't have a positive impact on the experience of my wife and I finding a nice cozy spot to play our game of Scrabble. The same thing plays out with our business processes, designed for completeness and efficiency, but the reality is that not all the work flowing through the process is taking the designed route, which has a negative impact on the experience that both the end user, as well as the people working the process are, happen, are having. And identifying what is actually happening with our, our business processes and then improving them isn't always as easy and obvious as the park example I just showed you earlier. For most of us, the continual improvement process is very manual, time consuming and expensive. It involves pouring through tons of reports, holding virtual and in-person workshops, maybe hiring third-party consultants and then getting alignment on the path to move forward. We're all moving at light speed these days. So even when we get through all of this, so much time has passed that the optimal path forward has likely changed. Good news. With process optimization or in-platform process mining, the opportunity is now there for us to do better. In a few clicks, we can expose to the relevant stakeholders the reality of their workflows so they can start improving immediately. Now, Process optimization can be applied to any process and it provides visibility into bottlenecks. It shines a light on redundancies and rework, points us towards specific automation opportunities that'll ultimately help us accelerate service delivery and optimize experiences. It'll help us increase automation rates and decide which automations or people and process adjustments will provide the biggest impact. So if you just take a look at this, this list of questions, the solution will help you answer. Things like, where are we spending the most time? Which teams and groups are slowing us down? What is the root cause behind some of these delays we're experiencing? These are questions we all have, and now we can get the answers in a matter of minutes. 
So how does this work? Well, every record on the platform creates an audit trail, kind of like Hansel and Gretel leaving little breadcrumbs behind them. And every time a record is updated, it stores the change in an audit log captured at the task level. This is turned on by default for something like 120 tables. So you probably already have the data necessary to get started if you wanted. We have a mining engine that prepares the event pipeline for the relevant audit data, handles all of the number crunching for you. We combine that with a growing library of common findings that guide customers to relevant insights through process op the process optimization analyst workbench. Then there are pre-built integrations with other platform capabilities like performance analytics, benchmarks, continual improvement management, and our predictive intelligence. And what these do is they streamline the mining process and make the insights to improvement process more efficient and complete. Some like to say closed loop. And this is necessary if we're looking to continually improve and not just make this a one-time thing. When we look at optimizing processes with the service with ServiceNow, you can break it down into four steps. Detect, analyze, improve, and monitor. Now, you're already probably using some of the platform's detection methods like notifications on SLA breaches or performance analytics dashboards and the thresholds inside of them. That's the detect phase. Process optimization, it dominates the analyze phase with things like visualized process maps, bottleneck, root cause, and variation analysis, as well as an integration with something we call automation discovery. The platform itself is all about improvements. So whether we're automating decisions with predictive intelligence solutions or experiences with the virtual agent or manual steps that exist out there with RPA, our own in-platform robotic process automation solution. Now, maybe the improvement isn't in automation. It's simply setting up a coaching loop with a team member. Regardless, there's plenty of opportunity out there for us to improve. Finally, we want to make sure whatever change we make is tracked and working. And that's where the integration with continual improvement management and performance analytics come in to close the loop. So detect, analyze, improve, monitor, all four aspects necessary for optimizing a process all on one single platform. It's pretty powerful if you think about it. If we look at how these stages play out in the throughput time example, that could play out across any number of workflows. In the detect phase, we could see, let's say, a significant increase in resolution times. And then in a single click, we could move from the analytics hub of that metric showing us the increase. We could move to the analyze phase and generate a process map for the underlying data behind that metric. And that's where we could start identifying things like uh, assignment group changes are leading to a significant de delay. Then from there, we may decide to use predictive intelligence to improve portions of the triage and assignment process. Then once we do that, we can start monitoring our performance with a metric tracking uh, resolution percentage on first assignment or first call resolution rate, some like to call it. So if you think about all of these four steps, we're closed loop, closing the loop on improvement. Now that throughput time is one high level example. Across your workflows, there are so many common findings and opportunities that in-platform process mining can help with as part of that analyze step. And what we've done is we've packaged these up into content packs. So essentially, we're giving you a library of pre-built finding templates to help jumpstart your mining journey on the platform. Now, these, like I said, these are just templates that are there to help you get started. You can tweak them, and you can certainly create your own uh, finding definitions for the assumptions or suspicions you may have around your processes. Now, whether it be analyzing the performance of different intake channels or vendor, uh, vendor performance comparisons, bottlenecks that are causing SLA breaches or, or process conformance issues, it, the, the improvement opportunities are endless. And once you get you get started getting regular res visibility into the reality of your processes, right? You just, you kind of keep on going. Now, all of those improvement opportunities, they result in three things at, at its core, speed, productivity, and risk for removal. 
And those three, they're ultimately going to benefit your C and ESAT scores and, and, and really have an impact on, on your organization's bottom line. Process optimization has already been activated by over a couple hundred customers with very levels, very levels of usage and maturity. But of course, we're always customer zero for our solutions. And we recently ran a series of mining exercises across several of our own internal workflows where we trained up the teams on the solution and then let them loose. Our SURF IT team have successfully used process optimization to optimize requests and incident management processes. So IT support is always looking for ways to improve their resolution times uh, for things like requests being fulfilled. Uh, they were able to use standard dashboards to determine that software requests consistently had a higher MTTR or resolution times than other types of requests but they could never really get to the why behind that KPI. Enter process optimization and in a matter of an hour, they were able to spot a secondary approval bottleneck that they were able to eliminate. They also noticed a large group of HR and workplace service delivery tickets that were incorrectly being assigned to IT and have now adjusted the process to reduce those, the reassignment counts and make sure things were getting to the right place. These adjustments have resulted in some significant time savings and productivity gains that you can see on the slide here. Now, I love these examples of what they saw because they really demonstrate how opportunities jump right off the screen when visualized in a process map. So here is that one in which they were able to quickly identify that approval loop, right? And if you look at the map on the screen there, once you take your data, put it into the map, I mean, that just jumps right off the page. You can't miss that loop from an approval process perspective, right? And you can zero in on that, drill in, kind of get a sense of some of the information behind those 1.2 thousand support requests that were caught in that loop or delayed by that loop. And then here we can see the 141 days that were lost due to things being assigned incorrectly. Again, jumps right off the page. You've got that line that's showing you what something went to a group and then it went to close complete. We lost 141 days worth of productivity because of these tickets that were taking that path. Not to mention the fact that there's some people that just didn't get what they need. So there was an opportunity cost involved with, with, these, um, with these tickets as well. So I know we just dropped a ton of knowledge on you, but here is what you should be walking away with. Process optimization offers unprecedented speed to value. You also get efficient closed loops process optimization because you have detect, analyze, improve, and monitor all four of those phases all on one platform. Lastly, you can get started doing better right away. You already have what you need to get started. You got the platform, you got the processes, and you've got the data. We just need to get you educated get you activating the plugins and get you start mining uh, today. So what do you do next? Well, to get better educated, there is an on-demand training course on nowlearning.servicenow.com that will get you everything you need to know from activating the plugins to creating and training your first models. Now, I highly recommend that you run through that training first, then go and activate the plugins. All right, so with the two plugins that you're most of you are probably going to need to activate. One is the process optimization plugin. Then the second is your ITSM process optimization content pack. That's the piece that package up, packages up some of those pre-built finding templates that we talked about earlier to help get you going. Right, you can activate those plugins um, and, and you'll be able to mine up to 4,000 records for any workflow just to try it out before actually procuring the solution. Uh, so you can get started right away doing that. Now, if you, you have questions, you can always reach out or there is a specific process optimization community forum that you can post questions to and get them answered. So that's on community.servicenow.com and just search up the process optimization forum. Now, finally, we started with a quote, let's end with one. To improve is to change, to be perfect is to change often. Everything you do with ServiceNow is focused on improving your world of work. What are, we are doing with in-platform process optimization is focused on improving the velocity to identify opportunities to help you get as close 
to perfect as you possibly can. Appreciate your time today. Look for more content out here uh, soon.